It's another dagger in the heart of U.S. soccer fans everywhere as Jonathan Gonzalez, the Mexican-American who has been in U.S. soccer youth camps, all that good stuff, has filed his one-time switch to go from the United States men's national team to the Mexican national team. Unfortunate for U.S. soccer fans amid a sea of bad news. So right now the sky is falling if you're a, you're a U.S. soccer fan. But I want to give you a slightly different perspective. I'm not saying the kid's not good. I'm just saying we got bigger issues going on. We got Sunil Galati and Don Garber put, propping up Kathy Carter and trying to get her elected to take their to take Sunil's spot, but really their spot to maintain control and power over the U.S. Soccer Federation, MLS, and the marketing of the games. You've got the men's team not qualifying for the World Cup. Obviously, that's the big one that's caused all this other stuff to happen. And I want to give you the perspective of Jonathan Gonzalez. So the the one thing I've learned as an American college football fan is you never tweet a uh, a youth prospect, a recruit, as it were. So don't go on and try and find Gonzalez on Twitter and send him nasty grams and say, oh, ah, yeah, you're going to the Mexican National League. Let's just consider he's he's been starting in the Mexican League for about five months now and looking really well. He looks like a youngster. He's made mistakes, but he's played really well. His dad is Mexican. He's playing in Mexico. His Mexican national team that he's now a part of, or at least he's part of their their setup, which I'm guessing is got a like, hey, you come over here, we'll play you at the World Cup, has a chance to play him at the World Cup. So you can't fault the kid. Like, how many World Cups do you get a chance at? Three? Four if you're lucky, like five if you're DeMarcus Beasley and you're ridiculous, right? You don't get that many World Cup chances. So if if the Mexican Federation is coming to him and say, if you'll switch here, we'll guarantee you whatever, a start or two sub appearances or whatever they offered him to switch to us in the 2018 World Cup, he has to take it. So you can't really fault the kid. Plus, there's a lot of like cultural and societal pressure on him to make that switch. And if his dad is like, hey man, like, you wanna play the World Cup or not? You know, like you're probably you're probably gonna go that route, right? But what what I want to give you the perspective on is yes, it's a big deal because he is a really good talent, but then you have to consider one of two things. Why wasn't he called into the U seventeen World Cup for for the United States? That's curious, isn't it? If he was that good, why wasn't he called up? So either we completely underestimated his talent, which is completely possible, right? And and maybe, you know, five months ago he wasn't starting in the Mexican League and, and whatever. But if he was that good and that highly rated from the U.S. squad, why wasn't he called up to the World Cup? Now, to be fair, maybe... We tried to get a call up. I, I, I don't know all the details of it, right? Like maybe we tried to get a call up and his team said, no, not right now. You know, maybe maybe that happened. Um, and maybe they said that hoping that he would go to the Mexican national team. Like who knows, right? But that's curious is if the sky is falling, then why wasn't he at the U-17 World Cup? But the other perspective is we're not going to the World Cup. Mexico is. It makes complete sense for him to do, to do that. But there are still a lot of really good prospects coming through the U.S. program's youth ranks. You get a Weston McKinney playing for Schalke and starting in the Bundesliga, doing a pretty good job. You've got Josh Sargent, who may, maybe that was that was also one of the reports is maybe um, Gonzalez was upset that Sargent, who hadn't even been into Germany yet, got called up for the Portugal friendly, and he didn't when he's been playing for five months in Mexico, which is completely, hey, man, like, that's a fair call, fair call. Uh, but there are a lot of good youth prospects. Tyler Adams for the New York Red Bulls, another option um, that are coming through the program that at the end of the day, one player does not make a team. It can't, right? Look at Christian Pulisic and our World Cup qualifying this year. He he played outstanding. Like I'm not taking away anything from him, but you can't rely on just one player. You have to have an entire team that's pulling in the same direction. So while it hurts to miss out on a really good youth prospect, you can't freak out about it because there are other prospects. Like you still need the whole team, even if that one goes away. Um, and there may be some 
unknown player that we don't even know about yet that by the time the 2022 World Cup rolls around will be of age and really, really good and, and could take his spot. There's more than enough players. We just have to develop them, I guess is my point. So that's the big news. That's the, like, I I, I, I wish I could be a fly on the wall at U.S. soccer headquarters because I'm sure there's a lot of, like, can we just get one piece of good news? Can we get one piece of good news? So, like, they, they just announced the January camp um, for the, the Bosnia game, and I've got a video that I'm going to do for that in a couple days' time. This this was more pressing because it's like, hey, look, we're bringing in a bunch of new prospects for our camp in January. And it's like, <laughs> um, by the way, you're not bringing in that guy. So that's the news. I thought I'd share that with you. I'm sure you, you've you heard of that by now. But I just want to kind of say, like, don't go after the kid. You can't fault him. And it's not the end of the world. It's just not good. All right. We'll see you in the next video about U.S. soccer. And maybe one day it'll be a positive video. I don't know. We'll take a look at the roster for the January camp. I haven't even looked at that yet. And we'll see if that'll be a positive episode. <laughs> so subscribe. It's over there. And we'll see you then.